after all the penis jokes of last week's video, I was looking forward to juxtaposing the vibe with a nice, chill episode about the beautiful little worms in Phylum Nimurtea. They're called ribbon worms. And I thought, hey, that makes sense, because they're long, flat, and colorful like a pretty ribbon. What a cute video this will be. I was mistaken. The Phylum Nimurtea utilize methods of prey capture and self-defense that border on the unnecessarily brutal. And while these traits don't take away from their aesthetic beauty, they might make you think twice about using one to wrap up your birthday presents. But what is a ribbon worm? How does this unassuming and squishy little baby capture and consume prey larger than itself? And could it hold the record for longest animal on Earth? We'll find the answer to all these questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. I'm gonna cut right to the chase. The ribbon worm, much like our old buddy the penis worm, does weird stuff with its face. The Nemertean body is unsegmented, flattens near the back, and more rounded at the front. They can be very colorful, but other than that they don't appear all that special, until they sense food. When a prey item appears within reach, a long, flexible proboscis quickly extends from a small hole at the tip of the ribbon worm's body and wraps around its unfortunate victim, in this case a polychaete worm. The proboscis isn't unheard of in the animal kingdom. Butterflies use theirs like a straw to drink nectar, while elephants use theirs as an all-purpose multi-tool for sensing and interacting with their environment. And proboscis monkeys use theirs to make them look oh-so-sexy for the ladies. But when it comes right down to it, Nimurtaeans have the most unique proboscises on planet Earth. The proboscis itself varies from species to species. Some, like this little cutie, coil around their prey and overpower it with sticky, toxic secretions that cause paralysis within seconds. Many also have one or more stylets on their proboscis, small needles that they use to stab their victim repeatedly, often used alongside those toxins I just mentioned. A handful of species, like those in the genus Gorgonorhynchus, have a branching proboscis that they use to ensnare victims like a sticky net. Once food is secured, Nimurtaean worms have two different feeding methods. Some will stick their head inside the prey, dissolve its innards, and then eat it from the inside out, leaving behind a hollow husk. Others take a more direct route and swallow their victim whole like a silly little snake. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, ah! But don't worry, ribbon worms are usually just a few inches long and a couple of millimeters wide, so there's really no- So sorry, excuse me. Excuse me, so unprofessional, I apologize. Hello? Hey, science, how you doing? Did you just say 180 feet? Are you sure? What do you mean you're not sure? No, yeah, no, that sounds annoying, for sure. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll let him know. Bye, science. I love you, too. So it turns out, in 1864, a ribbon worm of the species Linnaeus longissimus washed ashore in Scotland that measured 180 feet in length, which would make it the longest animal on Earth. But this record is a matter of debate, because measuring a ribbon worm is not as easy as it sounds. Their bodies are incredibly stretchy, able to expand up to 10 times their resting length in some species, and contracting to a much smaller size when they feel threatened. A more conservative estimate puts Linnaeus longissimus at about 100 feet long, which is still crazy huge for an animal that's less than half an inch wide. To make measurements even more difficult, Nimurtaeans have incredibly delicate bodies and will often break into multiple pieces when they're grabbed. So how do such delicate animals defend themselves from predators? One word. Proboscis. Along with being a hunting tool, a Nemertain will use its proboscis to entangle, stab, and poison its predators. Some species are also covered in a thick layer of mucus that smells bad, tastes bad, and, you guessed it, is poisonous. Now the last thing I want to do is sensationalize the danger posed by these amazing creatures. So I should clarify that although they are demonic death machines to small invertebrates and occasional fish, they don't pose any real threat to people. Some folks have reported swelling and minor irritation after handling Nemertaeans, but I could find no record of a human, or for that matter any mammal, being seriously injured by one. Would I put one in my mouth? 
Probably not, but I won't let their existence prevent me from exploring tide pools anytime in the near future. The phylum Nimurtea is beautiful and diverse, with over 1,200 described species and probably many more still unknown to science. While they don't have much in the way of predators, they still play an important role in maintaining a balanced food web in marine ecosystems. On top of that, some of their toxins are currently being studied for use as treatments against schizophrenia and Alzheimer's disease. So although they're not the most kissable sea creatures on Earth, they absolutely still deserve our love and respect. Next week, we'll meet a phylum of animals that share a lot of similar traits with Nimurtaeans, except some of them like to hang out inside you. The flatworms. Phylum Platyhelminthus. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.